Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive TV Peer Exchange, Metastatic Melanoma, the New Millennium. I'm Dr. Keith Flaherty, and I'm director of the Tremier Center for Targeted Therapy at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Joining me today are Dr. Rene Gonzalez, a professor of medicine and director of the University of Colorado Melanoma Research Clinic. Dr. Jason Luke, an assistant professor at the University of Chicago, and Dr. Jeffrey Weber, a medical oncologist, deputy director of the Perlmutter Cancer Center at NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City. The tools we have available for treating patients with advanced melanoma continue to expand, as do the data to help us use these novel therapies in more effective ways than ever before. Today, we'll talk about the most recent advances in melanoma research, and we'll provide perspective on how you can apply the newest data to individualized treatment strategies for your own patients. Thank you to each of you for joining us today. Let's get started. Dr. Luke, I was hoping to start off on the topic of local therapies for advanced melanoma. Not, not a concept that really um, ever um, gelled in clinical practice as having a lot of impact, certainly not for systemic management of disease, um, palliation uh, at best, but not really a disease-modifying strategy. Um, but it seems like we're on the dawn of, of, of something more meaningful than that. And uh, with the recent approval of TVEC, I thought that might be the, the place to start in terms of uh, really trying to understand what that agent has to offer and then also maybe trying to um, you know, project where might it fit in in the years to come. But, but for this audience, it might be useful just to start off with you know, what is TVAC, what is its mechanism of action? Yeah, absolutely. So TVAC is an interesting novel approach to the treatment of cancer. TVAC is a modified oncolytic herpes virus in which uh, the replication machinery of the virus has been changed such that the virus only replicates in the tumor. And the idea is that upon infection of the cancer cells, the virus will grow and cause lysis of the uh, cancer cells. As another modification of the virus, um, Part of what has been changed was the inclusion of some immune genes, notably uh, GMCSF. And what that does is when the cells lyse, it then recruits in other immune cells, which hopefully can amplify a larger immune response. And so to date, TVAC as a drug is administered as an injection uh, into individual tumors on the skin or maybe in the lymph nodes. Um, and really works in that local fashion. The question becomes, on a larger scale then, is there more to it than that? And I think we'll have some discussion about that here moving forward. But on the FDA label as it currently stands, the drug is injected into lesions that are on the skin or in the lymph nodes. And the data suggests that as compared with injection of GMCSF alone, there is a durable response rate of 16% relative to 2% for that injection, meaning that you can get local control of tumors on the skin or in lymph node basins. Mm -hmm. uh, the larger data regarding survival is a little bit less clear and likely is stratified by AJCC stage, and I don't think we fully understand that yet, but if we stay within the context of the FDA label, certainly this is a treatment that's highly efficacious for the management of local melanoma. Yeah, you know, I think uh, for listeners to this uh, discussion, I, I'll bet this is really totally new territory for them. And, and, and immune checkpoint antibodies, of course, um, have been now standard treatment um, with ipilimumab dating back to 2011. Renee, in your uh, experience in investigation um, and, and con just considering the data in aggregate, how would you summarize the, uh, the sort of safety tolerability profile of TVEC? It's uh, an extremely easy drug to use. Uh, we were involved in the early studies, and um, you know it's an easy intralesional injection. Um, the toxicity is uh, fairly minor. Um, local injection type reactions, fever, chills, that kind of thing. But uh, I can't recall a patient that we actually had to stop drug um, because of toxicity, and and the. The response in the injected lesion is is certainly higher. The concern is, uh, you know, what happens really with the with the distant disease. With the, yeah. you know, does it have a, a distant effect? And it's, it's it seems like it does, but it's it's less than than the local injection. Yeah, it's interesting that in the FDA approval, um, you know, the the, the language uh, of the uh, you know, package insert or FDA label almost cautions against physicians trusting that they're going to get a, a result. Um, but but uh, what, what's your sense in looking at the data, um, you know, if you have a patient who's got predominantly locally, regionally advanced disease, but some visceral metastatic disease, um, I mean, do you consider this to be potentially a systemic therapy for that patient, or are you really just initiating local control measures um, and anticipating moving to a more, a more systemic therapy soon after? 
Potentially, I, it wouldn't be my first choice as a, as a systemic therapy. We have, at the time this, this began to develop, uh, you know, it was quite a while ago, and, and uh, we have now drugs that are highly effective, and it wouldn't be my first choice in, for systemic effect. Uh, even if the patient only has an injection lesion or two or three or whatever, I still probably wouldn't start with this drug mm -hmm. because I would be more worried about the, the systemic disease. Sure. And, um, you know, but I think there, there is possibly a role for it, especially in combination with some of the newer agents and uh, to achieve local control. Yeah, and what's your, uh, what's your take on the kinetics of response? I mean, sort of the, the time course from beginning of injection uh, in the trials, they were re generally repeated, um, but didn't always have to be repeated in the same lesions. Uh, new, new, right, you know, right. new lesions could be injected or you, one could rotate around. So what was, your, what was your sense of kind of how long it would take for a lesion to, to show signs of Usually response? Usually multiple injections, but I've seen some disappear after just one injection, mm -hmm. and you can move on to the next one, or if something new appears, as you say, just go ahead and, and inject it there. Yeah. Um, you can inject into the lymph nodes, into the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, occasionally, it's useful to have something like ultrasound guidance to, to guide the injection. Yeah. Um, the dose is split up, uh, I think it's up to four lesions at a time, or, or four milliliters, so up, up to one millimeter ml per, per lesion. So Jeff, if you were to think about you know, the, the armamentarium we have now, some of which we're going to talk about later in the discussion, um, how would you see this agent fitting in? I mean, as it stands now as a single agent, could you imagine um, sort of a, a sequence, of, you know, trying to leverage its mechanism, um, or do you await combination data before you, you think that you really have a role for it? I, I could look at it in two ways. I see this as a niche drug in the same way that we look at isolated limb perfusion as a niche in melanoma because, you know, as you all know, melanoma is an unusual tumor in that there are many patients who have uh, local regionally confined disease, almost unlike any other of the common malignancies, where you'll have someone relapse and relapse and relapse only in the left lower extremity below the groin, and this could go on for years. Right. You could also have people with subcutaneous local regional disease on the trunk, and it could go on for years and years, literally on one side of the body, and, and I almost cannot imagine the biology of, of, of that scenario, but nonetheless, it um, opens up possibilities for local regional therapy. I would say this, again, is a niche, only a relatively modest number of patients in this country and in the EU, for example, would have a need for a local regional therapy only. I think the data clearly show that when TVEC is used alone as a direct injectable into tumors that are sub-Q and nodal, the likelihood of visceral metastatic benefit is very low. If you look at the data from the original trial that led to its approval, the randomized trial versus GMCSF alone, when you look at the outcome for visceral metastatic disease, there is no real difference in survival. So certainly I would not use this as a standalone agent in someone with visceral disease. I would rank it with an isolated limb perfusion, not by response rate, because it's probably not quite as good as an ILP, but it is so non-toxic, as Renee yeah. pointed out, yeah. so well tolerated, I would see it in the patient who might otherwise get an ILP as a perfectly reasonable possibility. Now, you were alluding to the fact that it would appear to be the perfect immune prime. Mm. In animal models, if you have local destruction of tumor from whatever maneuver or radiation, uh, you could use BCG injections, as we used to do with these tumors mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. old days, mm -hmm. uh, interferon, IL-2, and then you add a systemic immunotherapy. Sometimes you can see a priming effect which will amplify the effect of the systemic immunotherapy, and that's being tested in clinical trials. I think it is worth waiting for those data, which we will have, I hope, quite soon. So I wouldn't willy-nilly go give someone TVEC and then after eight weeks stop and put them on Pembro. Mm. I think that's an expensive approach <laughs> to local regional disease. Um, if, on the other hand, the current trials of TVEC plus Pembro, uh, whose data, the toxicity data, were presented by Georgina at, uh, I think it was at ESMO, right. the initial data show that you have an impressive response rate beyond what you would see with Pembro alone, I think that a lot of docs would, would uh, take uh, patients with local regional disease, inject the TVEC, and then stop at a certain period of time and then give them pembrolizumab or some other immunotherapy right. off protocol. And before